I did an internship for a graduate school at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. It was my first exposure to a track cycling, and I saw it for the first time and thought I really need to get out there and just check it out. And some people suggested, well, you know, if you got out on the road and actually trained for this, you might do really well. And Trisha Downing did very well. To further hone her skills, she became a tandem pilot for blind cyclists. She competed in several national events as well as the disabled world championships. Cycling was becoming part of the very fabric of her life. But destiny is little interested in our aspirations. Sometimes the lesson experience teaches is of the delicate cord on which our future dangles. I was on a training ride with a friend of mine, but a car that was coming toward us uh, was turning. By the time I realized that she didn't see me, it was too late. I went for my brakes and I just couldn't get them fast enough. So um, I hit the front end of her car and flipped up, flipped up off my bike and um, slammed my back into her, into, into her windshield and shattered my back there. And then I fell to the ground and I broke two ribs and my scapula. So um, I, I knew instantly that something was very wrong and that I was possibly paralyzed because I couldn't feel anything from my waist down. It felt like my legs were just floating while I was lying there on the pavement. In a brief moment in time, dreams can be whisked away. Trisha Downing was alive, but what would that life be like? They basically put my back back together again because I literally shattered my back. I stayed in intensive care for three and a half weeks and I was basically lying on my back for about seven weeks. I just laid on my back and looked at the ceiling. <laughs> Throughout the ordeal, Trisha's family rallied around her and the new realities she faced. We have a very big, interesting family. She was such an integral part before the accident that it really brought us together, put our lives in perspective. We would just do anything for her. She's the head of the family. She's, uh, she's leading the charge. From the beginning of the time that I was in the hospital, I had the recreational therapist in my room saying, okay, you were an athlete before, we're gonna make sure you leave here an athlete. What do you wanna do? Well, I think it was really helpful for her to have been involved with challenged athletes. Had she not had that experience and something to kind of um, move toward uh, or work on, a goal to set, I, I think it would have been a lot harder for her. I've realized early on that even if I were going to be paralyzed, that I did have possibilities and that my life was not going to be over. It was definitely going to be different, but it wasn't going to be over. I knew that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I just didn't really realize how long the tunnel was going to be. Trisha's reaction to her accident was nothing short of astounding. Within five months of when it happened, she was competing in a half marathon. Right away was training as soon as she got out of the hospital. That beautiful smile that she has was ever present. She was laughing and joking right from the start. It was awesome. Today, Trish is returning once again to athletic competition at the highest levels. My training has changed. There are a lot of days when I don't feel well. So I really take advantage of the days that I do. I'm using the same muscles day in, day out, whether I'm riding my bike, pushing my chair, swimming, or getting in and out of bed. So for me, it's really important to have high quality workouts and not go out there and try to punish myself for hours and hours at a time. On this day, just south of Denver, Trisha will swim, bike, and run in a triathlon. Her ultimate goal is to compete in the Triathlon World Championships as well as the Paralympics. She knows who she is. She knows what she wants. And she goes for it. She's a tough cookie. Regardless of her condition, she's the definition of an athlete. Competitive. She's not just going out there and, and, and doing her wheelchair racing. She's lifting weights, swimming, doing triathlons, probably doing three times as many things as, as normal athletes do. There is a point on that ribbon of highway where the labels able-bodied and disabled come together. And here is a unique athlete 
who has competed in both worlds. For me to be in a group of 500 or 1,000 or 6,000 able-bodied triathletes and I'm the only person in a wheelchair, I think that speaks volumes right there. I mean, it, it shows people what the human spirit is made of. If you really want to do something, even if you have a challenge in front of you, it's definitely possible.